Hello, Linda Smith's my name, and I love seeing butterflies in my garden. Over time, I've added more host plants and nectar plants to increase the variety of butterflies that visit my garden. I've taken photographs of those butterflies, so what I'm going to do is I'll go around to each host plant and show you the photograph of the butterfly that goes with that host plant, and also show you a range of nectar plants, just as an example. Okay, let's go. Here's a lemon tree, my lemon tree. Uh, it's host plant to the dainty swallowtail butterfly. Uh, this is a photograph of a butterfly on my zinnia, which I plant seasonally in my garden for nectar, for all the butterflies. Um, I'll look for the egg of the dainty swallowtail on the, underneath of this brand new growth. And if I find them, I do take them inside to, to raise them, to keep them away from predators. Gives me more chance of seeing more of these butterflies. Um, sometimes I'll see the butterfly flying around, other times I just want well, wandering around my garden when I find them. All right, next plant. Okay, this is stinging nettle and Sophie assures me that it's a sign of very good soil, not poor gardening, so I'm going with the very good soil. Uh, it's the host plant of the Australian Admiral Butterfly and this photograph was taken on uh, some echium which was, uh, my echium is not in flower at the moment, but that uh, is a plant that I've got, another nectar plant that I've got in my garden. Um, now, I, I've got a glove on uh, because they're stinging nettles and they really hurt. Uh, I, what I look for is a curled over, a curled over leaf, or um, let me see if I can find it. I saw one earlier, ow. Oh, there it is, there it is, okay. Now, here we go. That was a curled leaf and inside is a caterpillar. Now, I can also, I will take this inside and look after it until it's pupated. So I can see two pupas, one, two. One's obviously lost its curled over leaf, but the other one's still under like an umbrella style leaf. Um, so that's what I look for when I'm looking for these caterpillars. And again, I'll take them inside and keep them away from predators uh, for the Australian Admiral Butterfly. Okay. Uh, this is my caperberry bush, which can be the host plant for the caper white butterfly. Different to the cabbage white butterfly, the caper white butterfly lays its eggs on the caper bush. But originally the Caparis michelii, a huge tree that you could find in the Wait Arboretum or the Adelaide Botanic Gardens. There is an app that you can download for the Wait Arboretum to go and find these, for, to find that tree in the Wait Arboretum. I've done it. It's quite a lovely experience and I've seen the butterflies flying around then. Now, again, I've been able to raise this butterfly, as you can see on this one, the underwing is quite different to the cabbage white. It's quite a pretty underwing. And here it is, I'm raising it uh, at the same time as I'm raising some monarch butterflies. So let's go to the next one. So here we have the fine leaf milkweed. I've also got broadleaf milkweed in my garden and they are host plants to the monarch butterfly, also known as the wanderer butterfly. And here's a photograph of the monarch butterfly, wanderer butterfly, flying over some buddleia in my garden. It can also be the host plant for the lesser wanderer, a very pretty butterfly, um, which I haven't seen in my garden for a long time, but it definitely laid its eggs on my broadleaf um, milkweed. So hopefully I'll see it again one day. All right, next one. After taking many photographs of, in the first instance, the monarch butterfly in my front garden, in my back garden, and inside my house because I was raising them, I was able to take fine detail close-up photographs of the monarch butterfly and then choose my favorite photographs, uh, which I used to compile a book called The Making of a Monarch. Inside are close-up photographs of the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. And this then sparked my interest to attract lots more butterflies to my garden. The next thing I did was join the Butterfly Conservation Society of South Australia. They've got great information on butterfly gardening, um, resources uh, and events. 
some one of the particular resources that I found very useful was this book attracting butterflies to your garden uh, I'll put the website at the end of this short video of Butterfly Conservation Society and my website so that you can find more resources if you're interested but particularly it gives you the host plant that attracts that particular butterfly and in this instance for example you've got the common everlasting which is the host plant for the Australian painted lady a great resource before we head out to the front garden I thought I'd show you a few more ideas about nectar plants now we've already mentioned zinnias I normally just grab a pack of seeds and sprinkle them around this time of the year uh, the echium known for that big long purple spike uh, Buddleia, that's uh, also known as the butterfly plant, and I'll just show you a few more. Right, here we have the scovola coming into flower. That's a very popular plant for butterflies. And then over here, we've got the Senecio vera vera. This plant, uh, one of Sophie's open gardens, was covered in painted lady butterflies. And today mine's covered in bar bees but I've also had the painted lady recently visiting as well. A painted lady butterfly on the Senecia vera vera. Can we see her eating? Getting, yes she goes, look at that, look at that proboscis. Now this is status. I've got the white one and the purple one and I've set, definitely seen butterflies over that flower. The flower on the fine leaf milkweed is also a great source of nectar for butterflies. This is a gardenia bush. It's in my front garden and it's the host plant of the uh, meadow argus, a very pretty butterfly. I like it because of the beautiful big blue dots on its fore and hind wings. And here it is on a nectar plant of marigold. That photograph was taken in my backyard. You'll also notice that this gardenia plant has a tiny yellow flower. Um, so that means it's also a good nectar plant for butterflies. Here is the clumping variety of the Hardenberger. There's also the climbing variety, it, uh, also known as the native lilac. It's the host plant of the common grass blue, seen on a spent marigold taken in my backyard. Uh, it has also a, this pretty little pea flower, purple pea flower, that means it's also a source of nectar for the butterflies. This is a common everlasting plant uh, it's host plant to the Australian Painted Lady. As you can see, it's been feasting on my Senecio vera vera in my backyard. Uh, it's slightly different to the Meadow Argus where its blue dots are only found on its hind wings. And you'll also notice that it's got this lovely bright yellow flower which will provide nectar for the butterflies. In my front garden, I've got a uh, non-invasive lantana. It's got multiple flower heads, tubular shape, perfect for the um, proboscis of the butterfly. Uh, I planted the grevillea originally for native birds, but I've since seen butterflies using this for nectar. In the corner, I've planted a uh, fine leaf milkweed. And as I've shown you from my backyard, it's got a tiny flower for nectar. I've also planted brachys comb, seaside daisy, buzz buddleia, uh, there's other little white daisy style flowers and over the fence there's a, an abelia, huge abelia plant and a huge buddleia plant so you don't have to do it all maybe your neighbours will help you. Right so in my front garden I've got a range of native plants, ornamental plants. Uh, I've been inspired by the Butterfly Conservation's book to give me the ideas for the host plants for the native butterflies uh, my council had a giveaway of indigenous plants, which I took advantage of, and I've just chosen a range of plants that I like in my brand new front garden uh, to hopefully attract a wide range of butterflies and some great insects as well.